Welcome to Keep the Hotel Empty. Today we've kept the hotel empty for Steven and Nico, two gentlemen who make aggressive music from the soul for from the band Mothbite. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming. So, I know you guys have been musicians for quite a while. I would like to kind of find out where your stories start individually and how you bring Mothbite together and make this idea become a thing. So, why don't you start and tell me kind of how your musical journey comes to be. So, I would say, I mean, we both, Stephen and I, we both met at church, and that's kind of where we started playing together and jamming and all that. And that was a whole journey on itself. And as far as, like, background and roots, I think we both have roots in metal. Yeah. (laughs) Metal and, like, all that kind of music, punk stuff. Um, Was guitar your first instrument? Yeah. Uh, That was, like, the one that I caught on to. I actually played piano first, but piano I played for, like, literally a few months and then I kind of just dropped it and I didn't I didn't like it and I just didn't play music for a while and then guitar came to me in like middle school I believe so did you start playing piano in like um like the typical way where you got to go to practice once a week type thing yeah I think it was it was lessons with this this old Asian lady like straight (laughs) up like she was showing me she didn't show me notes but she showed me how to play like just showing it and also by ear and I think that's my little kid brain was like okay I do this and I just played a few things and then I don't know it just didn't catch on for me like I played it for like I said a few months and then just didn't enjoy it as much and I kind of stopped for a while so you had some desire to play music but that wasn't it I think that sparked it somewhat but I don't know something I just didn't like the instrument as much and then uh my brother had gotten a guitar on Christmas and for some reason I picked it up and started playing uh System of a Down you nice. Know, you know them, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what was it? Hypnotize was the first song that I learned, and that was just like from then on. It was like started playing it, and my mom's like, "Is that him playing?" <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah," just quietly playing around on the intro and everything, and that kind of started the journey. Like I just fell in love, and I couldn't put guitar down. So by middle school, you got a guitar in your hand, and you know you've been bitten. Yeah. No, no pun intended. And this is literally a first act guitar from Walmart. Nice. <laughs> yeah, and I played that thing for like three years. It was great. Oh, shout out to the first acts, all the first first acts out there. Yeah. So how do you get to your row? Do you start playing around that time as well? Yeah, I was in like fifth grade or so. My parents just bought me a drum set, and I just started playing the hell out of it, honestly. No lessons? They were just like, here's a drum kit, go after it? Uh, I just started like messing around with it a little on my own, and then um, my parents were like, oh, let's get them lessons. And then I uh, had like a jazz dude. So I was learning a lot of jazz and like Latin grooves and like songs. Really? Yeah, and I would like take that to metal, like at home, and kind of just like use like the weird rhythms from Latin and like the musicality and like dynamics from jazz and just kind of like learn metalcore songs with that in mind. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. How did that seem to you at the time? Did it seem like, man, I'm blending things together? Or was it just like, oh man, I just want to do everything? Well, there's like no one to teach metal drums around here, really. Like, you really only, like, get, like, jazz or, like, the rock that they were teaching was, like, not not it for me, you know? It was, like... Gotcha. Not, you know, I like double kick and stuff, so... I don't know, I kind of just... You got to organically start to pick at all the things around you and make your own thing right out of the gate. Pretty much. Like, and uh, you kind of just build your own, um, like, rudiments, I guess, Mm -hmm. and, like, your own little styles, and you have, like, your own little things that are, like, unique to, like, oh, I learned jazz and Latin, I'm going to mix it together with metal. Very cool. It's it's unique. Yeah. And people kind of, like, notice it, so. Well, and that's being able to take advantage of your surroundings, too. You know what I mean? If there's no metal drummer around here, at least you can take (laughs) the Latin things and make some use out of it Mm -hmm. or the whatever uh, influences you do find. Yeah. So at that point, you guys are both picking up your instruments, you're both finding your passions, teenage years. When do you start to take it a little bit more seriously? Do you get into your first band together or separately or like us two? Yeah. I think we're we're both in like separate bands off and on. Like okay. I had started my own band in sophomore year of high school. Ooh. I'm not gonna mention the name because so you started cringe. to take you wanted to take <laughs> it pretty cringe. seriously. Right? <laughs> it's, so, I don't, <laughs> it's so cringe. But um yeah, it's just it was that was the first project where I started making my own music and everything. It was definitely inspired by like you know, those Memphis Memphis Mayfire, Miss May I, all that type of stuff off Rise Records and it was definitely up that alley. Um but yeah, that was my first band and then kind of playing music at church and stuff, got some experience there. 
and uh, kind of off and on in other bands. What, what about you? Yeah, I kind of just played a lot at school too. And uh, true, I forgot about that. Yeah. What yeah, kind of opportunities did you have at school? Jazz band. Yeah, jazz band. Yeah. Oh. Which is like really hard, <laughs> no. like for us, like the guitar player and uh, drums is like kind of ridiculously hard, especially yeah. for that age. <laughs> How important was it for you guys to have something like that in school, oh, instead yeah. of just having to be relegated to your, you know, jam session times? With the boys, garage jams or whatever. Like, how important is it that we got to? Yeah, that, that you got channeled that in school. I know, probably for you too. I know for me, it kind of introduced me to jazz a little bit more. Um, and I tried to read sheet music, <laughs> and for guitar players, I, it's pretty, it's pretty rough. If you know you're trying to read sheet music, it's kind of a meme for guitar players to just right. not be good at it. But that was helpful, but more so just having that you know dip in the jazz and in the, in the latin and all all these other genres it was definitely pushing in that way i would say did it help you see the idea of being a musician professionally as more of a possibility or weren't you even thinking about i'm going to do this for a career it was just about i'm doing this to do it at that point i really wanted to at that age in high school um to like play like in bands and for a while i think i wanted to do it just to get paid and that's what I did outside of high school is like once I was done with high school, I just started playing gigging bands, you know, at the bar, different bands playing like funk and R&B, and jazz, all that stuff. So got some experience learning that stuff, but it's not the it's not the soul of where I wanted to be at, you know, playing my own music and all that. So how did you start gigging? Mm, I just had some friends that uh, already had like a small band mm -hmm. and uh I kind of just hopped on with them. We played a few shows, and then it didn't work out, and I kind of just... I always wanted to just play in bands, so I kind of just figured it out, honestly. Yeah, and it a, helps having the drummer needs a gig, too, or everybody <laughs> needs a drummer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's... I, I was kind of always like, yes or no. Like, I kind of always had the decision to, like, kind of play what I wanted to. Nice. Which is really... Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, that's a fortunate thing to have early, too, especially. So at what point do you guys come together? Do you tool around for years or like this, or you start to come together pretty quick? We had a friend um, that was playing in a punk, like, post-hardcore band, I think is what we would call it. Mm -hmm. um, Easy Core. Easy Core, yeah. Easy Core. And um, he actually was like, hey, we need a lead guitarist. And I was like just getting back into music because I had taken a hiatus for two years. Okay. And I just got back into it, and it's like, we need a lead guitarist. And I was like, all right, let's do it. So I jumped into that, and I don't know how long that lasted. What was that, like? Probably like a year, a good year. <laughs> good year. It was during, uh, like, the pandemic, though, so that we couldn't play shows. Yeah, it was so raw. we just practiced really hard and wrote an album instead. Yeah. It was pretty fun. So that's how that's always a good question too. And sometimes it comes up, sometimes it doesn't. But so how did COVID affect you guys? It sounds like it was, you know, for want of a better way, putting it a good way for you to have some time to incubate some ideas. Mm, funny enough, quarantine happened and everyone started quarantining and I started going out and doing stuff more. And <laughs> funny enough, and I was working a lot at that time as well. So I'd literally get off work and then go to the rehearsal space and Everyone's wearing masks and stuff like that and rip the mask off for rehearsal and then do that. And uh, I was kind of leading to this by saying, like, with that band, mm -hmm. we're playing their music. But, like, in between, uh, Steven and I would end up kind of jamming and stuff. And that literally was, like, the organic roots. We would show up early. Yeah. Like an hour early. Or even afterwards, space. too. Yeah. Dang. So they yeah. let us lock it out. <laughs> so it was nice. So we could play longer. Nice. It would be, like, 10 or 11 at night. So we would just... No, no rehearsal, right? Just play whatever's on our mind and like play whatever. And we just kind of flowed together. And that's like a rare thing to find, obviously. Like, we used to do that I, all the time, though. Yeah. Like, even at like church and stuff, we would like, they'd like have to turn us off after. Shoot. We would just, be, yeah, <laughs> we'd just be jamming together and they'd be like, all right, leave. Like, leave. Oh my it's God. Time to go. I forgot about <laughs> that. True. Yeah. <laughs> So what were you th how how what were you thinking when you guys first started clicking like that that it did it notice was it noticeably different than what you had done with your bands and your experiences jamming with other bands previously or was it just did that take a minute to develop? I, well, we like listened to the same music. Like we were into a lot of the same bands. So mm -hmm. like I always felt like I knew what he was trying to do. Mm -hmm. ah. like, I kind of had an idea where he was going to take it. Okay. 
because it kind of just like makes sense if you like listen to hours and hours of like the same genre and they're all mm. copying each other doing the same thing you kind of like get the vibe right of, like where it's gonna go so what were your big influences at that time that you guys shared august burns red oh <laughs> yeah there, there's some old footage playing remember mariana's trench <laughs> yeah we would like collab all the time on oh man and stuff too yeah we, like play the same song in a different room and then you'd edit edit it together and we just post it on instagram and I, now we do the same thing just on a broader scale <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. were you doing that stuff during the pandemic reaching out to people online or was that when you That's were when just we were younger okay yeah. Yeah, that, sorry, we're jumping around timelines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're just like recollecting all these memories. I've yeah. known him for a long time. Yeah, so I'm like, I probably should have pref. Like, <laughs> we didn't. We just walked in. So, yeah, so we've known each other for a while. Um, as far as like COVID, like you were saying, what was your question on the COVID thing? How really how it affected you? you know, I mean, some people it took the wind out of their sails. Some people they just kind of sat around and waited until they could gig again. And then mm -hmm. it seems like some people had the. Um, they were fortunate enough to kind of go the route that you guys did where we were able to write some stuff. We were able to jam some more. We were able to work out all kinds of ideas we wouldn't have had the time for otherwise because we weren't preparing for shows. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm always kind of curious how it affected people because everybody took it a little differently. Mm -hmm. I feel like we were both working, right? Well, I like got a computer, so I started uh. to learn how to like write songs and like uh. use like logic and stuff. Uh. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like, I stopped playing drums for like two years. <laughs> Damn. That band was the first time I started playing drums again because it was a bunch of friends. Because I was playing in like an indie band. And then these guys from the punk band were there. And I networked with them. And then got in with them, brought Nico in. And then we, that I don't know, that band moved to Michigan. So then we were yeah. just left alone. And that's when it all started <laughs> really. Because I was like mixing during that time. Yeah. So I was like learning how. Like the first mixes are rough, but you know. So how do you guys write then? Do you write with the computer involved, or you do everything still organic jamming? Ooh. So we started doing organic stuff. So that's the thing when we were organically jamming, just coming up with whatever was on the dome at the rehearsal space with that band from Michigan. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a moment at some point where I was like, "Do you want to just try it us too and just do it like?" as a band, make this a thing. And we kind of started doing that. I was like, I have some songs on my computer I can send you. Ooh. And then I sent him, I sent him the songs. And uh, at some point in time, went to his house and I was like, all right, you want to try that song? And we tried it. And literally he was like playing all the parts, hitting all the hits and doing all that stuff. He's like, wait, wait, wait. And then go back and do a little more and then add some extra stuff to it that I just would have not thought of. And there was a moment where I was like, oh my this is this coming together. <laughs> this, this is, is working. <laughs> yeah, it was wild because it was like jamming. is. I think jamming is cool, and there's something really organic when the jamming is good. Of but course. But that, that's there, and then it's gone, and then it's just not there. But when you write a song and you compose a song, it's always there. And you can play it differently every night, but, like, it's still something that people remember and they can catch on to. And it's more intimate. It's not just a bunch of notes. And that's what we would try to get across with this music. Awesome. So do you, you purposely leave room in your compositions where you can be improvisational when you perform it? Yeah. 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 I play it, the drums differently every show. Yeah. You got to come to one of our shows yeah. to understand, full on, full on. to really yeah, understand. Because I've only heard the recording. Yeah. Because it's like the recording, but like there's parts that aren't on the recording. And then there's parts that are on the recording that we just give way more energy to when we're actually there. And yeah, like we, we can kind of like improvise, but it's like a organized improvise if that makes sense yeah, yeah absolutely like we know the direction we're going but we're like throwing in little fillers here and there so yeah kind of in that aspect we leave a little room for me it's like there's like a skeleton kind of yeah there's like points where you need to be together throughout like maybe three points throughout the song where it's like important to play like the track and everything is like how do you want to weave there like how do you want to get there like i'll like mess with dynamics like place like i just i kind of also just mess with him too it's like fun. i try to like surprise him <laughs> Because all of your music is instrumental, just the two of you, correct? Yeah. Okay. Do you have any thoughts about ever adding vocals? Or have you ever thought about that? Not really. Or is nah. it just the communication between you two, and that's that's really what it is? We actually get that a lot, and um, I think that's one of the things where we get it a lot, but once people see us, they're like, you don't need a vocalist. Because like, 
some people still might say that, but yeah. most will get the idea because the guitar is the vocals in a way. But then the drums sing too. So it's like firing back and forth. There's a lot of push and pull between the two instruments. I, I think that's like, it's something very unique that no one's doing. And a lot of people feel it. And a lot of people are moved by it when they see us. It's, it's an experience. It really is. Amen to that. So how do you, I noticed in the record, there is quite a few layers where there's layered guitars. How do you handle that live? I have uh, some extra hands under here that you can't see. Nice, like a Goro thing? <laughs> <laughs> I just try to, uh, some parts are actually together, um, depending on like how I'm playing. And there's like different techniques, like just hybrid picking basically. Um, and some of the parts I... I don't know, I just I've kind of mesh both together in a way. And that's where just the different genre experience comes into play, like jazz and solo jazz guitar and all that stuff. Um, and then other than that, some parts straight up I leave out because they're not as important. And I just play hard on the parts that are important, and he fills in the rest. That's kind of what you're saying is hitting yeah. those spots, making yeah. sure you hit those spots together. So in order to do that, you guys must not play any tracks or a click live, right? No. I see that head shake. That's <laughs> that. That's the I don't want to do that head shake. In the future, possibly, but like it's there's so much. I think um, I play with tempo on purpose. Yeah, like, right. I love to fluctuate it and like kind of like because it, it keeps it interesting for at least me personally. Right. Playing like you know like it's just fun. Yeah. Time doesn't because if we're together, then like what is time? Like why does it have to be like the linear? Boop, boop, yeah. Because if we're together, why not make it dance a little? Yeah. Because right. like jazz is swung, you know. Like yeah. you're not playing your eighth notes the same way you would in swing styles. You would straight, so it's like kind of bringing swing time to the invisible metronome. <laughs> right. And then playing hard stuff on top of it that's like hard to figure out too. So it's just that's like the layering live. It's like kind of like mentally like oh my gosh. So, like you said, the push and pull is really an active part of it. Yeah. So I guess here's here's here might be a dumb question if there is such a thing, but do you feel that being able to be free like that really makes your music? Yes. Or conversely, if you had to, or if you chose to try to play to a click, it would suffer? It would, well, we've, here's the thing. We've never tried to play with a click track and have like the backing track layers, but I have a theory that it just, it might not have the same raw feel that we do when we're it's just us two because like there's so much i've been observing this with just going to shows and just checking out other bands all these bands are great but there is something that is not present when you're just playing with backing tracks and you're just kind of going through the motions and you're playing the song and you're playing your part as it is whereas if you're not using a track and you're just in that moment other people are going to pick up on that they're not going to understand it, but they're going to like pick up on like w the raw energy that's there. Right. And I think that's that really puts our music where it is in a way. And like with the tempo change, it's not always there. But say for like end of the song, it might slow down, and it's like that is very dynamic in the sense that you know you got your volume dynamics, and then now we have like tempo dynamics. Like if we want to slow down or speed up, whatever the case. But and that happens yeah. always organically. Mm -hmm. So then let me ask you this. How do you approach tracking? Because it can be hard to track to fluctuating tempos. Do you track everything <laughs> live together, the two of you? No. 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 Yeah, I call the record, like, um, I kind of use the record as, like, a, I don't even know. It's, like, a different sort of thing, honestly. Like, I run it through, um, like, different, like, plugins and stuff and get, like, different, like, effects. And then, like, we'll reamp his guitar stuff mm -hmm. into, like, my pedal board and just make it, like, insane noises like just crazy noise floors and just kind of like writing with that and just kind of like it, i just try to make it sound different because it's gonna be different live right and uh honestly like getting like that live stuff recorded is kind of expensive yeah. doing it this way yeah. it's like literally free well technically we did do a live recording over at 152 productions um in nice. orlando so that's on youtube i just show you guys all the links all that i was gonna say we'll, yeah. we'll put the link in the description for that yeah. for sure so that's an example of us like in a live setting though so it's not exactly um what we have on spotify and all that what yeah we your have album gray matter how did yeah. you how did you approach that one that's the one i listened yeah. to it i mean it sounds like you tracked it mm -hmm. but for you to put down guitars over drums that fluctuate tempo that can be 
really challenging. Yeah. So how the, did you manage that? That's literally all just metronome. <laughs> okay. Like, that's the only way we can get things to line up. Right. Because I'll, I'll record all the parts and everything, the guitar parts at my house, and then I'll just shoot them to him. Gotcha. On, in stems. Yeah. And just load it in. And... Yeah. So it, for that, that's more of like we need the metronome so we can easily just plug things in and gotcha. just throw it in there. It's not – the tempo change is very subtle when we play live, and – it's funny enough, it's not on the parts you would think. So I was editing a promo video, and I already told you this, but I was editing a promo video, and there's clips from our live footage mm -hmm. of him playing, and uh, back and forth, I'm trying to line it up to the song that we played to, like the studio song and our live footage, and it lined up perfectly on tempo. And I was like, dude, you know we're on tempo. Like, we're literally <laughs> on tempo on this without any mention. It was kind of crazy, but... Dang, oh, that's muscle funny. memory right there. I think that's what it is, though, and very well, blessed to have when that. You mix it. Yeah. I, I've listened to that. I've listened to that album hundreds of times. Like I, it's, you know, when you mix an album, you're just constantly hearing the same song over and over again. <laughs> yeah, I know that life. So let me ask you that: How did you come to decide to do all that stuff yourself? Was it just a matter of I can, I will? Yes, or? sir. So and I, I want to. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it's really fun. Yeah. Heck yes. So how did you how did you come on the knowledge base to do that? Was it a YouTube university thing or you have some engineering background or I just yeah, I just do an insane amount of research mm -hmm. <laughs> in like a notebook and just watch videos and just like a lot of I call it experimenting though. Yeah. I just have a lot of fun just sitting there and writing a song that I know sucks that like I'm not trying to share. But like I'm like experimenting with new sounds and like how does this layer in with this or like trying to double like just a new way to stereo pan something to see what it does when it gets louder right messing with like your luff range just testing out pedals and some of my like shrill pedals like just ruin a whole mix <laughs> so you're like dialing that in and then maybe a year down the road you're like using that pedal in a song and you're like oh you're, like you know what to dial into i don't know it's just like personally i just like it and i think like i just kind of keep stumbling my way into finishing an album and every time i'm done i'm like i can't believe i did that <laughs> you know well that's a good sign that's always a good sign <laughs> yeah like it's i just have a lot of confidence <laughs> that's what i was yeah. just gonna just push through just do what sounds good too like I'm, I'm sure when you're doing that it's like you follow where your ear takes you and like you do what sounds good sometimes it can be really hard to trust that though for some people yeah that's why i'm that's, no. yeah. that's what i was just gonna that's, that's where we bounce things back and forth though. that's what i was just gonna ask how important is it for you to have the attitude where i don't i'm not gonna look at this as failure or whatever this is just experiment what do you mean by that well you don't have to worry about if you're bad at mixing if you don't care if you're just having fun and doing it that's on my other stuff you know that's like that's on the moth bite stuff i i, I stress <laughs> <laughs> i stress well, the real stress would be paying someone else to do it who, yeah. you know, has a litany of it's... engineering credits or anything like that. Exactly. It's all a learning process because, like, no matter what, it's like, you know, years from now, like, this experience is going to help you, like, when you're doing mixing stuff in the future. And it's, yeah, it's just repertoire, really. And that's how it goes. I can look at songs I wrote, like, when I was in middle school, too. Like, when I started playing guitar, they're trash <laughs> bro like this that's so bad dude and if i could pull them up now and do a side-by-side -side comparison i'd be cringing really hard but you know that's that's the big difference there it's like i did that and i thought that was cool at the time and i was like oh this is so good but then like years later i'm like oh my gosh but it got me to like where i'm at now to like be able to do this and that's like the fun part of it i have fun doing it he has fun doing it so yeah, and I guess I guess my question is, how much do you feel that a fearlessness plays into the fact that you made it from shitty songs in middle school to ones now that you feel better about? You know, for some people, it's just the blind confidence that helps them keep going, and it's fun, and we want to do it. For some people, they feel like they have something to prove. For other people, it's just an artistic niche, and it doesn't matter if anybody ever hears it. That's sort of mm. why I asked you, you know, how much mm. did you want to play? Because some kids just want to pick up guitar and sit in their room forever. You know what mm. I mean? So I think that the fearlessness is a, is a spot where a lot of people get hooked up. So I'm wondering how that was for you if you were conscious of it at all at the time, you know, not second-guessing yourself. So you got past shitty song, not second-guessing yourself. So you made it past man this sounds like ass but six months from now i'll know how to use this pedal if i mm -hmm. let it sound like ass right now you know what i mean just wanted to like I really wanted to like when you really want to do something it's like that is that is it you don't 
you don't care what other people think you just do it and that was the thing when we started it's like it's just us two and that's it there's n we don't have the bass player we don't have a rhythm guitar player we don't have a singer crazy enough so <laughs> yeah, believe it and, yeah so someone could look at that and be like oh you need all these other members and it's we have everything we need right here and we started doing that a year and a half later of playing shows and it's like we have so many like organic i would say fans or just followers that love to show up and just ride the wave with us at these right. shows and it's always a fun experience and people are like shaking from the energy and just like like it's awesome and we different reactions from everyone everyone isn't i keep hearing people say like they're put in a trance like throughout the whole set and goes by super quick and we even have people crying during the set too it's insane nice. but just the fact that uh i don't think it matters so much as like yes you need the skill to do these things to do the songwriting to do the the producing and the the engineering you need the skill but i think there's just the genuine love that you need for it and also you put the love into it and make it sound good and i don't know for us i mean i know for me like when writing songs it just i'm putting stuff like sending it to him and it's just all things that you know feel good and sound good and i enjoy hearing like i will listen to my own i'll unashamed will say this i listen to my own demos and everything and i just enjoy them as like music itself just listening to them and picturing how it's gonna come out and yeah, just enjoy what you're doing. That's what you need. I mean, that's where this art comes at, you know? Right. Yeah, and that's that's a that's a, so, sort of a unique thing of itself, too. It's not art. You're not making it out of desperation or pain or whatever. This is actually a, a, a joy thing. Mm -hmm. So what do your songs, when you perform live, do you perform them, like, as a concept beginning to end, or do you do you make up a different set every night? Because I'm, I'm interested mm -hmm. in this live show. How do you, what's the trance come to be like? Ooh. You should just come to one. <laughs> yeah. Well, there, yeah. I want everybody that yeah. sees this yeah. to want Everyone to come to one. You already got me. Yeah. I want to. I'm All coming. Right. Um, so I would say we we change the set pretty often. Like every, I wouldn't say. Pretty much every show. Yeah, it's close. It's getting close to that where we just swap the songs and move it around. But the recent set I really want to do for the next three weeks with the hallway for, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, that's kind of, we just plan it out as far as like. The middle songs, you know, we kind of figure out a flow, but um, to answer your question, I mean, we really just, the, that intro and the first song is important, mm -hmm. and the ending song is also important. important. Um, but along with that, it's, for me, it's like when I'm playing on guitar, I'm thinking of the songs and how they lead into the other ones and the transitions, and if we can bind two songs together easily, then definitely want to do that. And, right. Um, just keeping... I don't want any like too long of interruptions and also we're on a timer when we're playing these shows so usually it's like a 25 to a 30 minute set so i will literally like put my phone down put the timer on and just keep playing <laughs> and try not to take too long just so we can cram everything we want to cram in and um put a set out that's enjoyable where it's like front to back just nothing but music and good noises and stuff how does the live show I uh, translate ideally best in your your eyes? I just I just want it to be like something different, <laughs> honestly. Like just a lot of energy. Like um, I don't know. Like it physically hurts to play as like hard and as much as I do. Like after the set, I'm like out for a day or two. Like I'm just just like sore. <laughs> Dang. But uh, that's kind of like it's just fun though. Like, it's fun to just leave it all out. It's like a mm. form of, like, uh, therapy, I guess. I don't know. You gotta like remember. Literally, but, you know. This dude hits the hell out of this. <laughs> his drums. It's not like a little... Doo, 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 doo. No, I no. mean, it's not out of it. Yeah. This is how you get the tone. You're sending air through it. Right. So send yeah. some air, you know? That's send right. Send some air. Well, and I think those are uh, some of the things, too, that get lost in performances today that are kind of flat. And, you know, I, I'm very anxious to see your energy live. Um, it sounds like it's very deliberate. Every yeah. hit matters. Yes, yeah, sir. That's, that's, <laughs> yes, sir. That's, it's not planned out, but it matters. Yeah. Like, it, it's all played with a lot of intention. Like, I'm locked in. He's locked. We're locked in. Like, not thinking about anything else, but just, like, the moment itself, too. Like, not really thinking about, like, too far ahead or, like, something from behind. Like, you're just... That's why I think it's fun. You're just locked in the moment. And you're just thinking about, like, the verse when you're in the verse. And then if we were about to, like, hit this chorus part, then, like, 
you don't worry about it till you're literally there mm-hmm. in it. Right. And it's just fun. People feel that. I was going to say, that's unique. That's something different. They feel that and they pick up on that. And that's what keeps them locked in. Because the songs are structured differently, too. Like, mm-hmm. we're not playing, like, a chord progression with, like, a nice lead line that comps the vocals and, like, slowly gelling a song or, like, bringing it up to, like, a point. Like, it's, like, it all, like, it's just a song from the very beginning to the end. Like, there's not really much build more than it's, like, music. And it builds by intensity of, like, the notes you're playing, too. Mm-hmm. And how we play it. But it's... So when you're performing in something like that where you're in it, like you said, you're locked in it, how conscious can you be, if at all, of the fact that you're even performing for people? What's it feel like for you two? I don't notice anyone in the crowd, like, ever. I'm just kind of in my own little world. I don't even look up. Like, I'm kind of just, like, locked in. I forget to look up. (laughs) I forget. I will, like, mid-set and, like, kind of look around and see what's going on. But, like, at the same time, I think... My brain turns off, and it just, it's, uh, I'm just listening. That's all it is. Like, nothing else really matters at all. I'm just listening, and then I have moments where I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so lucky to be doing this. Like, just playing the songs, and then I purposely won't wear, like, earplugs or anything when we play. A, so I can hear him and hear my guitar and hear the very, very fine, like, touch of everything Mm because it's got to be crisp. Mm -hmm. And B, because sometimes it's just fun to hear the crowd reaction, if I'm honest. (laughs) And, like, just to to hear that, like, for, you know, the songs that, you know, I sit there and pluck away at in my room and to be playing in front of people is just like, oh, my gosh, this is a blessing. It's so cool. So very thankful in that aspect. But it's between that and just listening because, like, like he says, like, we're both locked in. Like, that is the moment and that's the only thing that matters. And it's yeah it's just a fun ride that's awesome i love that ethos so let me talk to you a little bit about the equipment that you're using to bring this to the world because if you're not you know in the the click tra- click tracks and in ears and all that mm-hmm. i'm guessing that you're not playing with modelers and you know real modern stuff too talk to me about no. your approach to to your equipment live so that took a little bit of fiddling around with <laughs> to like get the moth bite sound onto my guitar and get something that worked well. Um, I can't name every pedal off the top of my head, no. but um, just a standard size pedal board. Um, a lot of my tone is coming from the PRS MT-15 I was talking about earlier. Okay. Um, that thing kicks. I love it. So still it's, using an amp. Yeah. It's it's tube amp all the way. I love tube amps. And um a lot of the like gain that I play when we're playing live is coming straight from that. And then I have my onboard compressors on the board and um, like literally one overdrive on my board and I just leave that on. And we swap between uh, dirty and clean channel quite often. So the clean channel on that PRS is literally the reason why I got that head. It's mm. cause it sounds great. It sounds great with the gain as well. So I was like, that's, that's the one. So I grabbed it and I have that going into a two by 12 Laney cab and it works nicely not too big not too small it works great and um that's pretty much it i mean for a while i was using the six string uh charvel the hss and works great i used that for a while still using it on a few songs but i swapped over to an eight string uh legator that i was talking about earlier um and i think that kind of on gray matter there's three eight string songs at the end Mm -hmm. and We've continued to work on new songs, and we're including some new songs in the set, but we have nice. a lot of new songs that we're working on right now that's, like, under the table until, like, we get to that point. A lot of those are eight-string songs, and I think that is starting to just naturally become part of, like, the arsenal, really. And it takes that low frequency of the, you know, those eight strings. I can utilize all that, and it works nicely to include the chords, include bass notes, and just fill everything up a lot more and um it's been fun really like the a string (laughs) so that gives you more versatility from a sonic standpoint and then your rig gives you a little bit more versatility to still translate the sounds from your hands not so much i keep it really simple though like i have a reverb and delay and i don't really do too many other effects just because there's so much going on and it's pretty straight to the point a lot of like the music is just coming from like the playing and the composed the composition and um yeah 
that's pretty much it on my end. There's really not much else besides that. So. And for you, do you have to fight a temptation to play a monster kit because you've got all this space you could <laughs> occupy, or you play a trap kit and just have at it? No, I just have like a small little, you know, just kick, one tom, low tom, snare, just some symbols. It really, it doesn't matter. Do you do you have the urge to make a Neil Pert kit since it's just the two of you and you could? I mean, you got. I love the limitation. Okay. Limitation's important. Yes, sir. Yeah. Talk to me about that. How do you find limitation important? Uh, you just start playing linear. Like you, you just change the way you play. Mm-hmm. Like um, yeah. For example, like instead of like, cause I still make it like really melodic. Mm-hmm. So I'll like do like runs where you like uh will hit a cymbal when you would think to hit a snare. Mm-hmm. And you just like hit like a bunch of like, I don't know how to describe it. It's just like um. I don't really know. <laughs> like, my think, symbols are all yeah. unique symbols, too. Like, I yeah. have a stack that's like, sounds really weird, and, like, my main ride is, like, cracked really bad. <laughs> and, like, my other china... Customized. Stuff is, like... Yeah. Tone. Yeah. Yeah, it just... It sounds weird. Like, it just all, like, I'm kind of just making noise to pulse a beat. Like, all I hear during the set is, like, pulsing. And it's not, like, a metronome, but it's, like, pulsing, like... Mm, 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 mm. You know? Like, you got that going on the whole time. Right. And then I'm kind of just messing around with, like, kick and snare. Because that's, like, what people dance to is kick and snare. So if you, like, offset your kick and snare and, like, make that, like, insane, you don't need all, like, the tom work, really. Because you're just, like, breaking necks with what you already have. Exactly. Just taking a new approach on, like, what seems simple, and then you just do, like, two or three things, and then it just throws the whole thing over. (laughs) And everyone's like, ooh. That's interesting. So how do you straddle the line between simple and complex then and having too many options and, and, and not? That right there is having too many options is not a good thing ever, I don't think. I think there's something beautiful about being in a box and then creating with the tools you have. Uh, for me, it's just my guitar. <laughs> that's that's kind of like where I'm like, okay, I have this guitar. Now what do I do with it? Okay. And that's where Similar you, approach you're taking. Yeah, and you, you create from that. And I think we both do that very nicely. Um, I forget what else I was going to say on that. But, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Like, we, we're really tight. We utilize a lot of silence in our set, too. Because I think um, that's something that just naturally I, I, I noticed all my life, and I never was a huge fan of it is when it was just constant noise. Right. <laughs> when, you know, artist or band goes up, and it's just constant noise pounding away. And... That's cool for some genres, but for me, it's like oh, I want to want to do different things and want to utilize that space to take your breath away and whatever it is. Um, and simplicity is a big one. It's a very big one, especially as a guitar player, or just anyone. But naturally, I think instrumental bands. I'm just gonna say it. Instrumental bands tend to shred. Right. Blah, 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 play a bunch of notes, and yeah, no one's gonna catch that. No one's gonna. There might be some person in the crowd that's a guitar player, like, oh, cool, but the, the human ear does not want to hear a bunch of notes. They want to hear something that sings to them, and it stays in their head, and that's where the focal point of this band is, is like making something that grabs your soul or something that at least is catchy, it stays in your head, but at the very least, it hits you in the soul somewhere, and that's definitely what makes us special, I would say. Um, you'll hear, like, we just call, we'll call verse, chorus on the song because there's a literal chorus on these songs. You'll hear there's repeating melodies and all that, and it might as well be a voice, honestly. Right. I still make it mathy, too. Yeah. Yeah, I like, I, I, I math out with the drums, make it like nuts. So it's like, I kind of, I call it comping to him. Like, he like has like a melody idea, mm-hmm. and I kind of just let him do all that, and then I comp to it. Mm hmm. In a way, it's controlled, though. It's still controlled. It's not, like, out there. Or well, I, like, change your ideas yeah. around by the way I comp, too. Like, yeah. the way I place the snare, like, if I want it to be halftime, like, that's that's up to me. I still got your melody. So I'm, mm-hmm. like, kind of still writing with the drums. Like, it kind of is, like, 50-50. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of a way it sounds like you can kind of couch some complexity in the simplicity. You know, you Pretty can much. make those it's little It's a blend. Tons. It's a very much blend. If it's too simple, then it's like, all right. Right. Elevator music. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's 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 hard. Yeah. It's like a tight it's yeah. It's a really tight line to ride. So, now I don't think about it, it has its moments because like there's parts where we're just like going off. And <laughs> well you gotta kinda, have that. Yeah. But it for the most part it's pretty controlled, I would say. Yeah. 
Well, I am very anxious to see the going off and the controlled. You've got a show coming up. When's your next show after this? So we have a show at this place called Oscura in Bradenton. Ooh, it's shout on, out Oscura. Shout out, man. Yes, sir. They're, they're great. Part, they're part of the family. <laughs> yes, they're great. We love them. Uh, March 20th. So it's going to be on March 20th. We're playing with Curses and a bunch of other bands. On, it's, yeah, it's on a Wednesday. Um, it's going to be a fun time. And we're continuously updating our Instagram with like different promos and shows that are coming up as well. So we have quite a bit this month and next month as well. So what's on the media horizon? Do you write whilst you play or do you shift gears and focus towards letting your mind be right to play? You're saying like live shows and yeah, like composing? You, yeah, exactly. Hmm. Kind of do, you, do you do both at the same time, or do you do <laughs> one and then the other? I, I, I just want it to be harder yeah. every time. It's both. We, what we, do you mean by harder? Harder, heavy, or more challenging? Myself, like, oh, okay. Like I just, I, yeah. I want to give more. <laughs> yeah, I would say like in between. You're asking if like we're writing stuff right now. Yeah, or, yeah, yep. So uh, the last six months, in between the shows, is like I was just like pumping out songs, and now they're all on drive. So like I was like, hey man, I sent them all to him. And, yeah, we're kind of just working in between the shows, like, to slowly get this next album going. And um, I don't want to say too much on it, but it's definitely, oh, man, it's Grey Matter times five, <laughs> honestly. you played more shows. You're better at writing. I'm better at mixing. Yeah. Like, it's just the natural. It's nice to see. Like, it just is yeah. going... We're getting better. And we know our sound, too. Like the, the, yeah, get that our, first record out of the way, yeah. Because Grey Matter is technically our second album. If you okay. listen to our first album, that was, like, before we even really started playing together. So it's, like, it still sounds good. But now it's, like, Grey Matter is such a staple for us, I think. That was, like, here's our sound. Gotcha. And then the next album is, like, ooh, <laughs> get ready because here's more. And, yeah, it's going to be great. I like the new album more than the last one. Dude, I, I just think yeah. it's, like, better melodies and, Same. Like more interesting <laughs> songs. Like, you're just yeah. attacking more. I really want to put our new stuff onto the promos, the little promo clips for the shorts, but that would be a bad thing. Cause you're going to get everybody, is this new material? Is this you? Yeah, is what this song is this? I'm yeah. like, oh, man. <laughs> you going to play this live? Yeah. So what are you most excited about for the change then? What if the growth is the most exciting for you? Do you notice that your melodies have gotten more intricate? Do you notice that Dude. you're getting more mileage out of your energy? I got better drums. <laughs> I'm just, like, having a lot more fun. Like, if I think of something I want to play, it just comes out, like, live in action. Nice. Because, like, you're just, your arms are so warm. Nice. Just playing all the time. Every week, there's, like, a show for me. Because I play in, like, other bands, too. So there's, mm -hmm. like, a show every week for me, pretty much. So I'm always, like, playing. It's a good time. Do you find that that's hard to manage and you're just doing it? Or you find that that actually helps you to be in multiple bands? It kind of helps because, um... I'm, like, learning how to be a drummer again, if that makes sense. Because I'm just comping to him. Mm -hmm. But now when I'm, like, playing with other people... Because I also, like, do fill-in gigs, too. And, like, um, I'm, like, gluing everyone together. It's, like, kind of like a whole new take on drums. Very cool. <laughs> Which, like, is what you're supposed to do as a drummer. But I haven't done it in, like, a couple years. So getting to do that again, I'm, like, getting, like, feel back. Mm -hmm. so nice. So it's, like, feel with the intensity and a lot of notes. I'm just trying to hit harder, like, faster... It's more interesting. Uh, that's a hell of a trio right there. Yeah. Faster, harder, more interesting. Yeah. I think that's every drummer's checklist right there. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. So do you think that you'll have another album out yet in 2024? Or you're going to focus on writing mm -hmm. and just playing the shows and give yourself time? I'm not going to say dates yet. Oh, we're just taking our time this, this time around. We're going to take your time with it and make sure it's good. Last um, time, did you have confines on yourself or expectations you made on yourself? We definitely had some expectations to get something else out because we were sitting on these songs and it was like, okay, these songs are way better than the first album. Ah. And yeah, that first album yeah. was not a good representation of yeah. us. Oh, like, so you had the pressure that we we really want to get our real face out there quick. Yeah, it just felt like it. Like, we, just the development was so quick too because, like, those songs in the first record are songs that I had on my computer for a while and, like, mm. before we even started playing shows. And then Grey Matter is accumulation of all what we started to accumulate. So I was like, okay, this is really our sound more so. But um, as far as your question about like the new material and like, like what exactly we're excited about, I, yeah. I would just say it's way catchier and the songs are way more mature and both the songwriting and all that. And like, dude, I'll, I'll cry on some of the songs. <laughs> it's so embarrassing and cringy, but I fucking cry on some of the songs just cause they're so good. Like it, it well, hits that me. means you yeah. mean it. 
Yeah. And I'm like putting my whole soul into it. So it's like, I hope other people can feel that when we release it and when we play it live even more, because this is just a recording I'm listening to. I can't imagine what it's going to be like when we play it live. It's going to be ridiculous, probably. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> So I'm, I'm definitely stoked to see you guys live. I'm definitely mm. stoked for what your future holds. I want to get you out of here on something fun. Mm. If you could set up a gig with you and two other bands, I don't care, living, dead, dream gig, there's no rules. I don't care if it's on the moon. What is the gig? You can, you can collaborate or you can answer independently. I don't even, I don't even know. <laughs> and the reason why I ask this is because I'm curious where you see either your music ideally sitting with mm. vibe-wise or you see your ideal sitting with to get to a different, a more broad audience. You know what I mean? Hmm. I don't even know who we fit in with. So that means you get to pick whoever it is you'd want to play with. I'm going a, I'm to a say like, man, that, that's so tough. There's so much music out there and so many good artists as well. Right. If there was some crazy... Some crazy show bill that was Hiatus Coyote, Polyphia, and maybe one other crazy band. I don't know. But just those two are some big hitters that if we played in the same bill, I'd be like. That'd be a good home for your sound. Let's go. Let's go hard. <laughs> we need to go hard. <laughs> like we'd play that. But as far as our home sound, I don't, I really don't know. It's going to keep developing. But some people say we sound like Polyphia. Some say plenty, but it's like not. It's like little moments where it sounds like that, but it's just not that either. So um, I think we have something completely new that we bring to the table that none of these bigger bands are doing. And very cool. They all have their boxes, which that's cool. You got to have some kind of box. But, right. Um, but we we really stick out in that aspect as far as like it's just raw, organic, and it's it hits you in the soul. Amen. What about you? I really don't know. <laughs> I mean, I feel like we would fit in pretty good with just, like, I love noise rock and, like, shoegaze and, like, weird, like... Very cool. Yeah, like, emo, scrams, like, just, like, noise. Just, like, violent noise and stuff, Like, too. all the way to Melt Banana? I don't know. That oh, that's that's <laughs> the, the, the royalty of Japanese noise rock. Okay. Oh, do you know Toe? I don't. Oh. See? Looks damn. like we got some music to swap. <laughs> yeah, Toe's cool. Looks <laughs> like we got some mad because I love noise and chaos, too. Yeah. Well... Nico, Steven, Mothbite, I'm so glad you guys came down. I'm grateful for having heard from you, and I can't wait to see you guys live. And everybody out there, make sure you get to see these gentlemen live. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having us, man. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Awesome.